All right, well, some are calling it an Obamacare numbers game that simply is not adding up for taxpayers. Hi, everyone. Glad to have you. I'm Neil Cavuto. And with a federal judge this week ruling, actually upholding, that health insurance subsidies in 34 states are covered under the new government exchange, and that can continue. And fewer young Americans are signing up for the health care law. And if that continues, we've got serious cost problems with this law. You have to ask yourself this. Is this thing measuring up? Are its costs just going up? No wonder Charles Payne is fed up and actually thinking taxpayer bailout. Is he going too far? Ben Stein, Sandra Smith here to debate it, as well as Adam Lashinsky here in the flesh and Charlie Gasparino. Charles Payne, what do you make of all of this? Uh, yeah, Neil, I got to tell you, we were, we were asked to, to suspend common sense when they pitched this to us, and it's only gotten worse since then. And the red flag was when Congressman Doyle told the world <laughs> that, hey, my adult son, we don't have to pay his premiums anymore. You, the American taxpayer, are paying it. I mean, you want to talk about outrageous, and now... Even if you're in a state with its own exchange, you still have to fork over money to pay up to 400% of the premium of other people. You added at the top, young people aren't, aren't getting involved. All the math on this points to some sort of massive implosion or massive tax hike. On who, I don't know, but it is a disaster and we can see it coming. What I love about you, Charles Payne, is week in and week out, you can maintain this anger. Uh, <laughs> That's why you got me in a cage this week. <laughs> How we arrange this seating pattern is beyond me. But uh, Sandra, what do you make of that? And the, the, quite the legitimate fears a lot of folks have that the numbers aren't adding up here and they're worried that they're going to go astronomically higher. Well, and, and, and this is a bailout, let's be clear, in every sense of the word. So people at home probably don't want to or probably don't have time to dig through the numbers, but I tried to just to wrap my mind around this. But we're looking at the fact that if the insurers underperform by 8% or more that the government then steps in and covers 80% of those costs. And by the way, it's the other way around too. If the insurers outperform by 8% or more, then they have to share 80% of those profits with the government. So lose-lose for them. But this is a bailout by every sense of the word. I can guarantee you right now the left is going to try to come up with every which way to say that this is not a bailout by definition. It right, certainly right. is. Well, Charlie Gasparino, I had no idea what she said, but I'm outraged. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> what does this uh, mean? I, I think you consider it a bailout if, tax, if taxes go up, if yes. costs go up. That's, that is not going to happen. Politically, that can Well, the happen. understanding, just to, to just put right. in layman's terms here, that if the insurance companies are in extreme duress and they right. just can't yes. keep up with this, right. then the only other alternative is to bail them out or help them out because right. then this okay, whole thing so goes you're, blowy, you're right? telling me a, a Republican Congress, and it's a, problem, it's a good chance we're going to have a Republican Senate, is going to approve that. That is not going to happen politically. Well, they approve bailouts for banks. The, the, yeah, because the whole financial system was going to implode, and that did not cost extra money. What if this was that melting? Did, that did what not, if this were melting? You don't think they'd do the same? It's not the same as the banking system. Oh, really? And by the way, Adam, and by the way, it ain't happening. <laughs> it's never going to happen. You go back to tell people they're going to lose their insurance because their company's going they belly will, up? They will dismantle this program uh, okay, before, I'm just saying before that it gets be, bailed be out. Be careful, I mean, well, of, of distinguishing your It's going to be dismantled. Meltdowns. Yeah, but, well, but there's a big difference in the way Sandra presented it. This is a bailout, pure and simple, and Charlie, wait, right. Charlie presented it, which is well, Sandra will be these numbers. Sandra, these numbers are taxed. <laughs> but these no are, this is written those. into the law. Those numbers are written into the no. law, by the way. Subsidies are written into the law, yes. R increased taxes on the people no. who can pay are written into the law. The congressman, Charles, that you mentioned, his adult son is going to get this subsidy, but not forever, and that's part of the program. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, I know you no don't want it. Hold on, let me finish. Adam? I know you don't want it ever, but the point is, it's not going to last forever. That's one of the subsidies, it might get worse. one of the taxes, but that it does not mean this is, is going to need a bailout. It might, but it might not. It won't All right, happen. well, it might not. It but but I do find, guys, happen. I do find it interesting that uh, Ben Stein's in Toronto. Right now. <laughs> so he's already moved. Uh, <laughs> there's socialized medicine there. Ben, what do you make of this? Well, I think that they, they scrambled up an egg, and now we're right. trying to figure out how to unscramble it. It was always scrambled up. We never knew what was in the bill. We always knew it was going to be a transfer of wealth from well-to-do people to less well-to-do people. We always knew there were going to be inequities. We always knew there was going to be confusion. There was never any good reason to do it this way. Mr. Obama just rammed it through on the basis of his majorities in Congress and his popularity after his election. We always knew it was going to be a mess, and sure enough, it's a mess. So uh, we, we, how we're ever going to get out of this mess is a very good question. How we're ever going to make it operate is a very good question. How it's ever going to be fair and equitable is a very good question. Why they didn't just do the Nixon thing of just giving a chance 
check to everybody who That's couldn't afford to done. buy health insurance that and have so them true. buy health insurance. I have no idea. That is so Well, true. Charles Payne, now we're, we're, whether you like it or not, it is what it is. And uh, Republicans, of course, want to just turn away from it. There's another strategy that says, well, let this thing go out of its own course and die on the vine of its own accord. I don't know if it, that, that would happen die. that way, right? Well, I, I, well listen, well, I, I, you know, to Charlie Gasparino's <clears throat> point, yeah, the, you may have a change in the Senate and the House, but the presidency is going to be the same for three years. And the argument is, are we going to let insurance companies go out of business and nobody has health insurance? <laughs> and it's going to be a tough proposition. You know, Ben just said that we knew it was going to be a wealth transfer. That's true. But we did not know that we were going to be subsidizing a, a single man, a grown adult who makes 45 grand a year, that somehow we would be on the hook to pay his premiums. We didn't really know that. Uh, we thought, at least they thought, the young people would sign up. It was kind of ludicrous. They're not signing up. So it is a ticking time bomb. By the way, I, it's going to blow up a lot sooner than Social Security will. This could go off no. in the next couple of years. Well, I'll flip this around on you, Neil. I, don't, I, don't, I think that the approach on de of Democrats and Republicans will be to let this run. You say die of its own accord. I say it will be allowed to run and it will get better more people will sign up more young people will sign up more well that's the hope right i mean i talked to a lot of the architects the behind plan. this and, yeah. and by the way i admire the ones who still insist that i'm one of the architects behind this because <laughs> it was sort of like saying yeah my building fell down but i'm the guy who built it but <laughs> nevertheless they, they are saying that look, look give this time the number and the trend is our friend do you honestly buy that because True. even assuming you, you you get millions more to sign up millions more are going to continue to lose coverage so you're still net net going no, to be down no i do honestly buy it because i think it picks up steam as it begins yeah, to so, work so it so begins to work more people, only in the most perfect world wait a minute only in the most perfect world follow, this, perfect Adam, follow world. what you're saying the, 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 those who have coverage through their employer now yep. millions of them won't have that coverage you would have to say that they're going to be shifted into something else whether it's an exchange a private exchange not what they have there's going to be a big adjustment so net net a year from now you'll likely have fewer people with health insurance than you do now and the whole idea of this was to cover everybody but that seems stupid but you're assuming a situation where nothing changes where nobody else picks up health insurance from their employer for any reason where nothing grows the economy doesn't No, grow. i think you'll it's have a pick up there but you'll also have more losing so in the end you get more losing than gaining and that is generally not good you now. know if you really think this is going to work i suggest look at the cbo report on the cost savings of it and i thought you were going to tell me that i uh, should subscribe to one of the exchange if I really well, think that too. That, that too. But I mean, that's a good point. I should have <laughs> thought of that. But you know, but think of the. If you look at look at the CBO report, there are 400 caveats to this thing saving on uh, any money. That's why it's not going to work. There's no, no no such thing as a perfect world. I don't believe. No, it. Wait, wait, wait. Well, 400 you know, caveats. Did you read it? No. There's, read it. There's okay. no Obama policy that makes yes, sense. Yes. Okay. There's, Go ahead, Neil. There's no, there's no Obama policy that makes sense. I mean, his foreign policy doesn't make sense. His, his uh, economic policy doesn't make sense. There's nothing about it that makes sense. It's just all confusion, and this is just the most clear-cut example of the confusion. All right. all right. Well, then I'll then I'll put you down as a maybe on the president. <laughs> uh, when we when we come back.